Your question raises the issue of identity. And that's a complicated issue, but I'll try to make it simple. Deep, 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 deep insight. Who knows who we are? Who knows? The simplest thing to say is, I'm a human being. If you want to go spiritual, you can say, I carry the spirit of God or the creator. Where do you want to go? You want to go spiritual, you can say the whole universe is in me. But to make things simple is, I'm a human being. That's the obvious thing. Now, while I'm a human being, I play different roles. And roles give me different identity, at least the way people look at me. And by the way, this applies to you also, to everybody. So when it comes to me, I'm a human being who plays different roles. So I'm a father, of course I'm a father. And that's a very important role of, of my life, in my life. And that's part of my identity. I'm also a man. I'm also an author. I'm also an educator. I'm also a corporate or organizational executive. I'm a citizen. I'll tell you how it works. If you've been to Venice in Italy, there, there are shops that sell masks. And some of them have an amazing collection of masks. So you go inside and it just doesn't end. Infinite number of masks, over, almost. That's exactly who we are. You're a human being who is wearing different masks at different times, at different occasions. In every context, you wear a mask that fits that context. Now, it's important to do that because every mask gives you a role and it's important to fulfill your role to the best possible manner, to the best of your abilities. So if you're a father, be the best possible father, a husband or a wife, be the best possible husband or wife, a son or a daughter or a brother or a sister or an employee or a boss or a friend or a neighbor or a citizen. I mean, you name it. Wherever you are, the role that you're playing, it is your moral, ethical duty towards others and yourself to play the best possible role. But never forget your identity from within as a human being. Because, I tell you what, because roles separate us from each other. So when you're playing the role of a boss, you're separating yourself from employees. You're playing the role of a sister, you're separating yourself from brothers. Hmm? And that's important for so that the role is functional. But the danger is that we get stuck in our roles and we make our roles our identities. And that's a dangerous thing. Because you, when you make your role your identity, you put everything in your role. Listen very carefully. And all roles will disappear. All roles are temporary. There will be one day that you're not a father anymore or you're not playing the role of a father when your kids you know, start their own life and they travel and you wake up in the morning and there are no kids. There will be one day that you're not a husband or a wife anymore because one day your husband or wife or partner will leave or will die. There will be one day you're not a boss anymore or employee or you won't have a career anymore because you'll grow in age or your job will disappear. You might get fired or the business will go bankrupt or something might happen. You might, even a president, one day you're president, after your term is done, then you're no more a president. So perhaps that's one of the most important lessons to learn in life is fulfill your role to the fullest, to the maximum, but never ever be stuck in your role. 
because you're not your role because all roles disappear all roles will vanish and if you put your identity in your role then what happens if your role disappears then you lost your identity then who are you so if you're married and your marriage breaks your role as a husband or a wife breaks and your identity all your identity is there so what happens to you you become a nobody it's a disaster you lose your kids to a sickness or some tragedy and you put all your identity in your role as a father and you lose them what happens to you you vanish you play your role to the maximum but be always aware that you are not your role you are not your role because you can't put all your anchor in something that's temporary and it's something that's controlled by others if your wife or your husband tells you I don't want you in my life anymore what happens to you? you're destroyed because you identified yourself to the core with that role these are just roles and as Shakespeare used to say life is a play the whole world is a stage and we're on this stage for a short period of time playing different roles but remember you're on stage playing a role it's not you one more thing to remember roles succeed and fail you're beyond success and failure very 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 careful Because if your marriage failed, does that make you as an individual, as a core human being, a failure? It doesn't. Because you could be a great father, a great brother or sister or an employee or a boss or a neighbor or a friend. Just because your marriage failed doesn't make you a failure. And that's a failure of a role. If you failed in your role as a husband or a wife, as an employee or a boss, as a father or a neighbor it doesn't make you a failure the role has failed why has the role failed because of a number of reasons either you did not play the role that particular role well but you could have played so many other roles beautifully or the people where whom you're playing the role with are not happy you see so that doesn't make you a failure or the entire context failed. So you play your role to the best. But if your roles fail, don't internalize it. I have said this, I have spoken about this in many, many of my, you know, pro executive programs that I, that I hold and in many of my talks, my keynotes. And you can't imagine how many people come back to me later on, maybe sometimes year, and say how this has saved them because it's easy to internalize the failure of a role and make it your own failure it's easy to say I failed I as a person failed right because a role you're playing has failed in relationships or in business or in work or whatever and when you say I as a person failed then you put your entire being in danger Sometimes people, after they break up in a relationship or get fired, and I know such people, their entire life is lost. I know somebody who lost, his, who lost his job, I don't know how many years, 25 years ago. Guess what? He's still broken. He's still unemployed. Because he's broken from inside. Because he interpreted th his failure in that particular role as his failure as a human being. But he is a wonderful person. He's a great father. He's a beautiful friend. People would love him, you know, would love him being around. But in that particular role, he failed. I know people who, after the end of a relationship, they completely collapsed. They go into years, sometimes decades of depression. And they can't start new relationship. They can't start their life again. Why? Because they've misinterpreted their, the failure of that particular role because for whatever reason, as their own personal failure. And that destroyed them. So bottom line, 
first and foremost, you are a human being. If you want to go spiritual, you are part of the divine soul, part of the divine force of creation. If you don't want to go spiritual, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter what you believe in. What we all agree about is that you're a human being. Second point is we play roles, and you will play so many roles. Some of these roles will succeed, some of these roles will fail. Your job, your mission, your responsibility is to play every role to the best of your abilities. If it succeeded, well done, enjoy. If it failed, learn and continue. If it was not for you, then okay, play another role. But never forget to keep your core within you intact. Because even the homeless person who has no job, maybe now even now even not even a relationship, living completely on the margin, in the most horrible, maybe physical and psychological situation, he's still a human being with the same words and dignity like a king and a president. And that's the miracle of, our, of, of, of what we have created as human beings in terms of culture and laws. That's the miracle of progress. You kill a king and you kill a homeless person, it's the same crime. You've just killed a person, a human being. Because the worth of that person is not dependent on the role they play. Whether this person is rich or poor, CEO or unemployed, king or a beggar, it doesn't matter. His worth comes from being a human being. And that does not need a measure of success, especially one that's determined by others. Just being a human being is enough. To know yourself is probably the most complicated thing anybody could learn. It has no end. You could live many lifetimes. You could live for thousands of years and probably not get to the bottom of knowing yourself fully. Because we are super complex creatures. We're very complex beings. After thousands and thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of years, and tens of thousands of real thinking, we've begun to understand the way our body functions. We're just starting to understand how our brain functions. We're just starting. And the journey is still at its first steps because of the complexity of the human brain. Here I've just talked about the body and the brain. Hmm? They're related, but it's worth talking about the brain separately in terms of its complexity. Now. This is the, 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 the physiology. I haven't even begun to talk about, begin talking about psychology. We still don't know how we think. We still don't know how we dream and why we dream and what makes dream happen. We don't know. There are attempts and there are many theories and there's substantial research into this, but where we haven't even started. Nobody knows where thoughts come. They come from. Nobody knows how thinking happened. Nobody knows that. We're trying, but it's so hard because it's so complicated. So this is our psychological dimension. The social dimension, what makes relationships, the way relationships are connected, formed, and the way they are complicated and the way they work, especially as social systems become bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm mean, going to just give you a funny example. After 50 years of marriage, you hear, you still hear people saying, I can't understand her and I still can't understand him. After 50 or 55 years of marriage, sometimes you hear statements like, 
it's like I don't know this person. It's like I was living with a different person. What does that say? It says how complicated we are as human being. Now, not, compli not necessarily complicated in a bad way. It could be also complicated in a good way. It doesn't matter good or bad. We are complicated. And it has is, it's a curse because it makes life so complicated and it creates so much unnecessary anxiety and worry and pain. At the same time, it's a blessing because look around you. I mean, look at what, look at human life. Look at what we have, we have created. Look at cities and countries and mega cities and technology and our achievements. All of that came from the fact that we are who we are. We are that we are. Very complicated forms of being. Now, let me talk about consciousness. Consciousness is, uh, I don't know, it's consciousness is like talking about a parallel universe. People talk about it from time to time. Nobody understands what really is, co what consciousness is. Let not enough investigation and science and research has have been put into this, not enough. And usually also scientists and, 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 and researchers stay away from it because it's such a complicated thing, consciousness. Some people, even don't ex some people don't even accept the word. Most people abuse the word. You, you s hear that in social media all the time. But they don't really know what they're talking about. I mean, they have an idea. They know there's something called consciousness. But deep inside, on a scientific level, nobody knows. Why am I saying all of this? Ah, I haven't even mentioned spirituality. The way we have created uh, religions, the way we have formulated religions, the way we think of, of spirituality, the issues of the spirit and the soul, whether they exist and what they mean. I mean, you can just go f further and further and further. Point is, you can spend your entire life and many lifetimes without knowing enough about yourself. But does that mean that you shouldn't start? Not at all. Because the more you know yourself, the better it is. It's like a machine. The more you know your car, the better you can drive it, and the, more, the better you are in fixing it. If you understand your car well, you can drive it better, and you can fix it better. So, in conclusion, when people say, I know myself very well, smile. But respect it because at least they give that a value. Continue on your journey. Try to get to you know your, as much as you can about yourself. Observe yourself as much as you can. Observe your feelings. Observe your thoughts. Observe your emotions. Observe your patterns of behavior. Observe your habits. Observe your reflexes. Right? Observe the way you think. Observe the way you feel. Observe all of that. And try to see patterns. And try to make sense of that. And try to get to know you know, how you behave in similar things as they repeat themselves. It will be so, it can, there's nothing wrong in that. It will only do you good because it will give you more space to maneuver and manage and, you know, at least have some impact or influence on what, you, what, you, what could be done, what you could do with, with, with you, with your body, with your mind, with your feelings, with your emotions, with your relationships. It's no wonder that that Socrates used to say, I mean, said that it's the mother of all knowledge. And I think the Buddha said, knowing yourself or conquering yourself is better than conquering a thousand battles because it's the mother of all knowledge and it's, it's the battle of all, it's the mother of all battles. But what's the alternative? You don't fight this battle, then what do you do? You live ignorant about who you are? That's also not the choice. So get to know yourself, yes. But know it's a journey. And know it has no end. And enjoy the journey. Enjoy getting to know yourself. This is not... Don't make it a paranoid thing. Don't make it a journey of torture. Don't make it a painful thing. F look at it as you're getting to know somebody, a wonderful person. Look at it as you're getting to know somebody whom you're going to spend your all, all your life with, definitely. 
and you're just interested in this person with everything that represents the mess and the beauty. Well, you can't go through a process of transformation if you don't know yourself. Because transformation is purposeful. What does transformation mean? Transformation means the following. I am very aware of my reality at whatever level you want to have. My political reality, my relational reality, my physical reality, my health reality, my professional reality, financial, whatever it is, I'm aware of my reality. And I believe my reality can and should be better. Can and should be better. That's when transformation starts. Because what you're saying is that there is a possibility that I can have a better reality. And when you start the process of doing whatever it takes to improve this reality, at whatever level you've decided, that's transformation. So you transform, huh? transform. So your form or your shape transform, changes, it trances, right? It, be, it moves from being this form, from being something into something else. That's what transformation ha means. It, you, it means you take a different formation and you do it by transition. So your form, your shape, right? financial, physical, relational, spiritual, professional, whatever it is, that form changes to a different form and it happens through a transition, right? transition, transformation. Now, for this to happen, your starting point should be that you should know your current reality. And that's part of knowing yourself. So maybe the first, maybe the, the one of the most essential elements of knowing yourself is to know your reality. What is the nature of your current reality? Which is an extension of yourself or the context where you live in. So when you have that clear as part of knowing yourself, and when you decide that this can be better because I deserve better, because it is causing unnecessary pain and suffering, because it is wasting opportunities of progress because life is short, because we can do be much better. When you make that decision and start the process of changing the form of your reality to a new form through transition, that's called transformation. But none of that can happen if you don't get to know yourself. And this particular part is knowing your current reality. Let me take it further. It also demands that <clears throat> you know what you want from life. Because to decide to transform, you need to decide to transform to what? Yes? Life. You need to decide to transform to what? I want to transform. Okay, to what form you want to transform? I want to transform my career. Okay, to what? So you need to know what you want from life. I want to transform my marriage. Okay, to what? I want to transform my friendship, my relationship. I want to transform my health, my finances, my profession, my business, my life. That's wonderful. But to what? So you have to know what you want. And knowing what you want is also part of knowing yourself. So on both ends, knowing your current reality and knowing what you want, you need to know yourself. This, both of them are part of knowing yourself. And the journey between your current reality and creating your future reality based on knowing yourself and what suits you best is the journey of transformation, i.e. changing your shape from your current shape to a future shape that you've decided that is best for you through the process of transition. And that's what transformation is. That's why it's important that you know yourself. Because based on knowing yourself, you can know your reality your current reality and you can know your future uh, or your aspired reality and you can do something about it. And that's what self-leadership is about. And that's in fact, that's what leadership in general is all about. Because it's about change and transformation. I read a, a nice statement that says, if you at 50, 
you still have the same thinking mentality and mindset that you had at 20, then you've just wasted 30 years. I'll say it again. If at 50, age 50, you have the same mentality, mindset, view of the world that you had when you were 20 years old, then the difference between 50 and 30 and 20, that's 30 years, have been wasted. Because what happens to experiences? Haven't you learned something from life? So of course we change. Every single day you change. In fact, every second you change, in principle. I mean, not major change. But every second, as you're experiencing life, you're changing. Definitely your physiology is changing because every second you're growing, 100%. No questions asked. Your relationships are changing. They're either becoming better or worse. It depends on what's happening. Right? Your finances are changing. Either you're spending more money or making more money. So everything is changing. Everything is changing all the time. That's the nature of reality. That's what happens. So with age, do you change? Yes, of course you change. Even if you do nothing, if you don't intend to change, you will change. Your body will change. So there's no, there's, there's no going away. There's no escape from change. So the issue is now, the question is, is it changed for the best or for the worst? And is it changed imposed by others or by you? You live in a country that the country is dying. Economic situation is getting worse. Living standards is, are getting worse. Are you changing or not? Of course you're changing because your life is changing. Your living standards are changing. They are getting worse. You're more worried. You have anxiety. You're worried about the future. Let me take it the other way. You live in a country that's prospering. That's blossoming. Becoming better every day. Are you changing? Of course. Because your country is changing. Your country is changing. And as your environment changes, by default you change. You live in a city that's growing in pollution. Are you changing? Of course it's changing. Because your environment changed. It has more pollution. So your body will change. You will die sooner. Or you'll become sick. Reverse that. The environment is cleaning up. You become healthier. So change will happen anyway, whether you like it or not. The question is, is it imposed by others or by you? Is it, do you have a say in this change? Do you want to do something about what's happening to you? Or you're just a straw in the wind? Or just, you know, a floating piece of paper, you know, that's a piece of paper that's floating on the sea. You know, floating on the surface of the sea. That is being tossed by the waves, left, right, and center. And change to what? Is it going to be to the better or the worse? Because you, you, I don't think there is a lateral change. You can change to the side. And even if that happened, it's not really a good change most of the time because you could have moved further. You understand? I'll give you an example, analogy. We have feet. Look at the direction of our feet. Look at the way our body is built. Our body is built to move forward. Grow up. To grow up and move forward. Our body is changing all the time and it's built to move forward. We have our eyes looking in one direction. And you can't look in multiple directions. You have to look in one direction. And they're focused, right? And you have your legs and your feet in one direction. You can either go forward or backward. Ideally, you should go forward because your eyes are looking forward. So you're designed to move forward. You're designed to progress. And when you move forward, you're changing. You're changing your place. You're not staying in the same place anymore. Right? Can you move laterally? Can you move horizontally? Yes, you can, but you're not designed to do that. Your legs, your face, your eyes, your head is not designed to move laterally. So in principle, you're either moving forward or backward. If you're not moving forward, indirectly you're moving backward or you're staying in the same place. And in relationship to everything else that is moving, you've misaligned, you're not aligned. You know, you've misalignment with everything else that's moving, especially if it's moving forward. So will change happen? It's happening every moment, whether you like it or not. Will you change with time? 100%. Of course you'll change with time. The question is, 
do you have a say in the change or just the environment around you is changing you without you influencing it the second question is is it a change for the better or is it a change for the worse this is where knowing yourself consciousness leadership self-leadership come into play because all of this has the purpose of what the what all of these together they have the purpose of what the purpose of making sure that you are managing you're leading in li your life and the life of people around you so that as change is happening it's happening for the best progress is happening because by default it's going backward if you don't do that you're going backward so you have no choice